Hello and welcome to the first part of my Souls-like combat tutorial series. For this tutorial series I'm gonna be using third person project and I also imported some animations from Marketplace. In this first part I'm gonna show you how to create stamina regeneration, running and walking. So let's get started. First off we need to create a blend space, so right click, go to the animation, go to legacy and blend space 1D, select your skeleton and open it. Now set the name to speed and snap to grid and also set the maximum axis value to the maximum speed value that your character will use. Now let's add some animations right here. Idle, walk, jog and run. And when you hold control you can see the animations blending together. Also you can add some smoothing time. I'm gonna use 0.2. And for us to actually use this blend space, we need to create animation blueprint. So right click, go to the animation, select animation blueprint, select your skeleton, hit create and open it up. Now drag from the result and type default slot. This is so we can use the any montages later and now type state machine. Let's name the state machine locomotion, open the state machine and from the entry drag and add state. This state will be called idle movement. Open it and the result will be your blend space that you created right now. Now you can see it wants speed variable. For that we need to go to the event graph and firstly let's get rid of this and type event blueprint initialize animation. Now try get pawn owner. Let's cast to third person character and let's promote this to a variable. Let's call it character reference. Now let's get the character reference and convert it to validated get. From that we can get velocity and vector length. Now the return value let's promote it to a variable and let's call that variable speed. And now we can go back to the idle movement and hook the speed variable right here. Now I'm gonna also make the character reference private and set the category to private and the speed will be also private and in the same category. Now this should be all for the animation blueprint, so let's close it. Now let's go and create an actor component, so right click, go to the blueprint class, select actor component and name it status component. And this will essentially hold all of the status variables that the character will use. So current stamina, max stamina, stamina regeneration, movement speeds, health, etc etc so for now we want to create current stamina and the type will be float max stamina and also stamina regeneration we also want to create walk speed jog speed and run speed i'm gonna also create categories for them and now we can also create a function here for decreasing the stamina so let's create a function and name it decrease stamina. And now we need to get the current stamina. It also needs to have an input of the type float named amount. And the current stamina will be subtracted with the amount. Then we want to get the select and check if the output is less than zero. If it is, then we just output zero. And if it's not, we output the value and set it to the current stamina. So with this uh, the decrease will never go under the zero. Now let's go to the widgets, right click, go to user interface, select the user widget and open it. Let's get the canvas panel here and progress bar. Name the progress bar stamina bar. Let's move it from the edge a little bit and also change its size and the color to more stamina like. Now go to the graph and create a variable called status component. This variable will be of the type status component that we created. It will also be private, expose on spawn and editable. And now let's create a function for refreshing the stamina bar. Let's get the status component, get current stamina, get max stamina, divide them between each other get the stamina bar and end set percent. Now we just need to return. Let's go to the third person character. Let's add the status component. 
Also, don't forget to set up your values in the status component itself, so it's gonna work. And now in the event begin play, either hold S and left click or type sequence. And now let's create a widget. Let's hook the status component here and promote it to a variable. I'm gonna set it to the category references. And also let's not forget to edit to viewport. Now right click, create a custom event name it refer stamina regeneration it will have one input of the type boolean called start stamina regeneration now let's get the branch and also timeline the timeline will be called stamina regeneration looper open it up and select the loop this will essentially just loop the event non-stop until the stamina will be full but for the stamina region tick itself, we will create a macro called stamina region tick. It will have one input of the type execute called execute. And now let's drag the status component, get current stamina and get max stamina. Let's check if the current stamina is greater or equal to the max stamina. And if it is, we need to refresh stamina regeneration and it, the boolean will be false also let's get the status component get maximum stamina and set the current stamina to max stamina so it will never exceed the max stamina number and now just get the player ui combat and refresh the stamina bar and for the actual regeneration we need to get the status component get current stamina and stamina region we want to add them together and set them to the current stamina and also refresh the stamina bar. Now go back to the event graph and hook up the stamina region tick. With this done, we can actually move to the running itself. So let's go to the input, right click, go to the input and select input action. Open it up and let's add two triggers. First one will be hold, second one will be hold and release. And the hold time threshold will be 0.5 for me. Now go back to the action mapping. Remove the action mapping from here for jump and also in the third person character. And now add the action mapping that you created and set it to space. Also, we need to create an enumeration, so right click, go to the blueprint and select enumeration. Let's name the enumeration player state. Open it up and let's add two enumerators. First one will be none and another one will be running. This enumeration will essentially say which state the player is in. And now go to the third person character, right click, get your input action, create a new variable called movement input, also set it to true. This variable will say when the character can use his input actions and when he cannot. We also need another function. This one will be called has movement key input. It will be pure and it will be in the category private pure. Let's get the character movement, last input vector, and not equal, 0 0.001, get the return node and hook it up to the return value. Now go to the event graph, get branch, get your movement input, get has movement key input and check them if they are true. So the first check is if the character is using his movement keys and if he actually can use the input action itself. Now we need to check if the player is actually running. So for this, we need to create a variable called current player state. It will be the enumeration we created. So let's get it and let's check if it's equal to the running. Now create another function, name it check for stamina. It will be also in the category private pure and it will be private and pure. Let's get one input of the type float called stamina needed and one output of the type boolean called return value. Now get the status component, get current stamina 
and check if the current stamina is greater or equal to the stamina needed. Hook it to the return value, close it and get the function itself. Check if we have at least 20 stamina. Now we need a macro to handle the stamina region. It will have input of the type execute called execute, output of the type execute called then, and then another, another two inputs, one boolean, one float. First one will be start stamina region, and the second one will be duration. Now this will be a little bit harder to understand, that, but first we check if we start the stamina region. If that's false, we want to stop the stamina region, also bring sequence, then set it to the output. Now if it's true, we want another sequence and gate. First then we'll open the gate and the first then in the false branch statement will close the gate and the second then will have delay. The delay will have the duration of the duration input. And afterwards, if it comes through the gate, we want to start stamina regeneration. Now let's also set the default number for the duration to 0.75. So what this macro essentially does is that whenever you perform some kind of input action, uh, such as attack, roll, or heavy attack or whatever in the Souls-like games, the stamina will stop for a brief second and then it will start to regenerate again. This is the macro that will handle that and it will also handle when to stop the stamina regeneration. And because we use the gate for it, it will never back out and it will never start regenerating stamina when it shouldn't. Now go back to the event graph, get the handle stamina regeneration, get status component and character movement. From the character movement we want to set max walk speed and the speed will be from the status component, the run speed. And lastly we set the current player state to running. Now for the actual sprint itself, we will create a macro called runtick. It will have one input of the type execute called execute. Now get status component, get current stamina. Check if it's less or equal to zero. If it's not, get status component and decrease stamina. Let's decrease it by 0.1 and also get player combat UI and refresh stamina bar. And if the stamina is less or equal to zero, we want to stop running. So for that, let's go to the event graph, create a custom event called stop running, and then set it to the run tick. Now let's go back to the event graph and set the run tick right here. And let's go back over what we created. So first we check if the button is pressed and if the player can actually move. Then we check if the player is already running. If the player is not already running, we check if he has enough stamina for starting to sprint. If yes, we stop the stamina region and set the movement speed to running speed. And we also set his current player state to running. Now because we set the current player state to running, when the next tick will come from the input action, it will immediately go to the run tick. Now for the stop running, we first need to get the character movement and set max walk speed. And this max walk speed will be from the status component jog speed. This will be also set if this is false and if the input action is completed, meaning if we release the button. And now we want to check if the character is playing any montage, so get mesh, get any instance and is any montage playing. And if it's not, we set the current player state to none. 
and also handle stamina regen, star stamina regen and duration will be zero. Now go to the viewport, select your mesh and set the anim class to the anim class we created in this tutorial. Also go back to the event graph and at the event begin play, let's add pin in the sequence and refresh stamina regeneration and start it actually. And now when we hit play, we can see that the stamina regenerates and that we can also run. It will decrease and immediately upon releasing the run, it will start to regenerate again, just like in Souls games. Also, if we don't have enough stamina, running will stop. And if we hold the button still and have at least 20 stamina, it will start running again. Now for the walking, it's pretty simple. We just need to create another input action. So right click, go to the input, create input action, add two triggers. First one will be hold, second one will be hold and release. The hold time threshold will be zero, 0 0.5. Go to the action mapping, add the action mapping, and I'm gonna set it to left alt. Now go back to the third person character, right click, get your input action, expand it, get the status component, and let's just copy this, and also copy it down here and get walk speed. And if this is triggered, we want to check if the movement input is true. So if we can actually use our input actions and if the current Polaris state is not running. Because if we are running, we never want to be able to walk. And if this is true, we want to set the movement speed to walk speed. And when we release the button, we want to check for the same thing. And if that's true, we want to set the movement speed back to the jog speed. Now, as you can see, the character can also walk. So, thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial somehow helped you and have a wonderful day.